Hi everyone. I have here a Concerto branded clock radio. Um, I'm not going to try to fix it today, but I do want to have a look inside because I'm kind of desperate to have a look inside this thing. It's from 1970 and we have a schematic down here. Let me see. November 13th, 1970. A handwritten serial number, that's interesting. A schematic. Mm, looks like someone might have been in here before, or maybe, let's see. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten transistors. All right, let's see if we can get this open. As expected. The back slides off. So what have we got? We've got two teeny tiny speakers up here. That's a cute. The 32 ohms. And then series. No, parallel. So 16 ohms, so that's more reasonable. Let's see what we've got down here. All right, so we've got three big capacitors here. We've got, that's a transistor, maybe one there. And we got the, and what are these, are these capacitors? It's funny, they're axial, right? And they've soldered a leg up and then, what's this? There's a diode up here. That's weird. Clock says, techno, sorry, telecron, timer, made in USA, switch rating, 125 volts AC. This is, yeah, this is all AC stuff here. This is all running on line voltage. Then it's switching this, which is the transformer. Well, this is quite a bit later, but um, I've now had a chance to look at the Clarion radio and I've expanded and printed out the schematic that's sitting on the bottom well, it's printed on the bottom of the radio, which is convenient. So, I tried the, uh, the radio again, and the issue that seems to be happening is that there is some hum in the radio, but I don't really get any sense that it's tuning anything or anything like that. It's very hard to hear. There's very little volume on it. So there are a couple of things that could be going on there. There could actually be something wrong with the power supply. The clock works, but it's being driven off the AC line. So there could be a problem with, with this, with the power supply. Although, since there's some hum on it, I don't think so. And actually, since the hum's pretty low, I think it you know, it looks quite likely that the filter capacitors on the power supply are okay, which I don't see, but are here somewhere. Um, yeah, right here. There's the filter capacitor on the power supply. So that could certainly be, be replaced, and I certainly have replacements for that. So no sound coming out. Let's just assume everything in the tuner sections is working properly. Right? Um, I had some trouble. I still don't I entirely understand how the RF amplifier works in these sorts of circuits. As I, you know, I'm a rank amateur at doing this, so some of these schematics just don't make sense to me. And the RF amplifier seems to be magic, but. Most of the rest of the stages do work. The other thing that I found complicated is that the FMIF 
mixer, I mean, this serves two purposes depending on whether it's in AM or a FM mode. You can see that you have this switch here which changes the AM oscillator into the FM IF stage. Or actually, if you look at here, it's the FM, it's the IF, AM, it's the mixer, right? And FM and AM. Anyway, um, I don't. Let's assume that stuff works for the moment. And so I think the problem might be in the audio amplifier here. And what I've done essentially is mark all the electrolytics in here. Here is the uh, volume control, right? So, and here is the capacitor, a one microfarad capacitor that couples the audio through to uh, through to the volume control, right? That coupling capacitor could be bad. This one could be bad, although I don't think that would cause no volume. It would cause the volume control to behave erratically, is my feeling. But this actually brings the sound in, right? From so maybe, right? Maybe that one, that one. And then there's this one, which couples through the various stages of the audio circuit. So those three are the ones that I think I'm going to replace. That's one microfarad, one microfarad, and that's five, maybe? Anyway, so those are what I'm going to replace, I think. At least that's the first thing I'm going to replace. And then we can consider the rest of the circuit. So that's what I'm going to do. And I will come back when I found where they are on the board. So here we are, just looking at the back of the board for the moment. I'll get a screwdriver to point with. Um, so here's the speaker. This is the band switch here. And this has got to be the other side of the tuning knob. The let me just look. Yes, the uh, the dial cord goes around the other side of that. So this is the switch, and then the green wire disappears around the other side. So I think the only thing to do here is going to be to take off this whole chassis. And that appears to be one, two, three. Four screws there. And then this whole metal chassis could come out. What's funny is the board is, you know, looks a bit of a rat's nest, but the like the physical design here, and of course the clock is very nice. Well the pointer came off the dial cord, which isn't ideal, but I'll live with it. Um, so I'm just going to treat, figure out how I can rearrange this. Let's see, so I can look at the back of the board. Let's see, we'll move. Maybe should just desolder the speakers, but whatever. So there we are. Not much to see, is there? All right, so let's just have a look at these wires and look at which ones we were interested in. Well, I don't even know what that is. We're going to definitely need the schematic to understand any of it, so I have it off to the side. There appear to be some small c capacitors on this side. I have no idea what that is. Okay, this is going to be very hard for you to see, I expect. It's hard for me to see. So this is the band switch here. And that's you know what, I'm going to see if there's enough extra slack in these, if I can tilt this. There we go. Okay, so here is the band switch. And there 
is a one microfarad capacitor that goes to the volume pot. We'll stick that back there for some reason. Um, what do you want to bet? That's our culprit. So I'm going to go find a one microfarad capacitor. 10 volts, 1 microfarad, it says, for that one, and see if I can hold it across and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so I got to trying to resolder this speaker lead back in place and thought I'd check continuity of it, and the continuity was shorted, which is possible since it's going through this transformer, so maybe. You know, maybe that's going to just appear a couple ohms to the multimeter, so that's possible. So then I just desoldered that side and said, let's check the speakers. 26.4, sorry, 32 ohms, and that's 8 ohms. And the speakers don't match. This one has no branding, and this one says Pioneer on it. Do the speakers. They're supposed to be 16 ohms. So what's with that? I mean, it doesn't look like anyone's taken the speakers out, but they're definitely different. Yeah, it's designed for two, it looks like from the, from the schematic, it's designed for two 16 ohm speakers in parallel, so it's designed to drive an 8 ohm load. So I'm going to hook just up the 8 ohm speaker and see if that makes any difference. Very weird. So I've replaced the capacitor right there. I've tested this one and on the, you know, the little GM uh, 328A tester it shows as unknown. I'm very curious to see whether there's any continuity through it at all. So, right, let's see if we've got any continuity through this thing at all. Uh, no, it's totally open. Totally open. So if, the, if all of these ones like this are like that, then just replacing one of them will not solve the problem. But out of curiosity, let's plug it in and see what we get. We'll look at power over here. Again, keeping in mind that everything around the clock here, which you can't see, it's off screen, is live when that's plugged in. But we can tell. All right, now do we hear anything? No. That should be all the way up. So, one capacitor didn't do it. Let's see what else we've got. Let's find the next one in this chain. I'll put this back before I break the little wires off of it. Like that. Now, interestingly, this screw wasn't done up when I <laughs> got this. So I think I found the next capacitor that I want to change, which is this brown one right here that's also marked one microfarad, but I'm not entirely sure how to get it out, so I'm going to leave that for the moment. And consider if I can find the spot on the bottom, I might 
put a uh, mount a, a replacement capacitor on the bottom because I think these are wide open so there's no harm in leaving it in circuit. So that's what I'm going to try to find where it's attached. Okay, I was starting to wonder about whether I was going to get this fixed, but I figured it out. And let me see if I can turn this without shocking myself, because that's live over there. All right, so this black wire comes from the center of the volume pot, and this goes to the first audio to output stage. And the coupling capacitor is on the other side. So, I don't know if you could hear that, it was pretty quiet. Um, I could try tuning a bit. So, we have output. So I'm going to solder this uh, capacitor on the back of the board here. I'm not going to try to get the other one out. And um, maybe I'll try to find the third one here and see if that will also help. Okay, I've soldered it on. It's a bit of a mess, but it'll be what it is. And let's get some power on here. Again, hopefully without shocking myself. And then we'll see what we got. So it's tuning, but it's very quiet. Let's try. Yeah, so you probably can't hear that, but it is tuning and it's very quiet. So we've got another capacitor to change, presumably. Okay, so just to show you what we've done, or what I've done, a little bit more light over here. I've replaced this capacitor. That's the one that went to the band switch. I've replaced this one. And the next one I'm going to replace is this one, which is 5 microfarad, 5 volts. I've got 4.7. That'll work. I'm going to probably do the same thing and solder it to the back of the board. So I'm going to look for a 5 microfarad one that it should be coming off of this transistor here. So it's probably this one here. Assuming that's 5 microfarad, I'm going to have a good look at that. And then I will try to figure out where it goes. Okay, so same technique as before. I think I know where it goes. So, it looks like we found that, that one as well. So, I'll solder it on right there. So, a bit neater this time. I'm not sure whether I'm on AM or FM. So that's FM. So FM seems to be working just fine. AM seems a bit touchy, but this isn't a good spot. 
So I actually think it's working now. At least a very basic repair has been done. I have no idea what this is over here. No idea whatsoever. <laughs> Anyway, I'm fairly pleased with that as a quickie repair of this. I'm going to try soldering up the speakers the way they originally were and see how that sounds. And we'll see how that goes. So with both speakers in, the hum in the power supply becomes noticeable. And yeah, so that then has a question about how about all these? In fact, I mean, we could probably assume that all these capacitors in here are bad. But this is, I think, where I'm going to stop at the moment, and I'll think about whether I want to do any more work on this thing. I'm not sure whether any of this is going to be picked up on the microphone, but I'm trying to short this big power supply cap, and I'm just putting this one across it. As you can hear, the hum mostly goes away. Maybe you can hear. So that one, maybe that one, we'll see. But clearly that one's got to be replaced. So it's the next day, and I think I've decided what I'm going to do here. Um, this capacitor here I'm going to replace. I'm not sure about these two. I'll see this one I can get at after I've got this one out. This one here, I think, is also a 500 microfarad. And I think that's interesting. I'll have to see where they connect. It's not entirely obvious to me, but I think they might be on the same spot. Because what's interesting is here, we have between ground and the power plane, we've got 1,000 microfarad. And there are two 500s in there. And I'm not sure there's a 500 marked anywhere else. So, yeah. I put a larger tip on the soldering iron, which is warming up, to try to get these out. I've got some desoldering tools, some desoldering braid, my cheapy solder sucker. And We'll try to make do with that. The one thing that concerns me trying to get this off is the possibility of touching an iron to the cord here and having that go bye-bye and then having to figure out some way of replacing it. I don't have any replacement cord, although I do see how the I do see how it operates, so I should be I would be able to replace it if I busted it, but I'd prefer not to. <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm sure everyone who's ever worked on a radio knows that feeling. Um, so I think I, my aim is going to be replace this capacitor. I'm just going to wiggle it out and then try to desolder a little bit. Here's an update on where we are here. I've replaced these two capacitors. One of them, I couldn't get the uh, negative side out because uh, it was right under the cord, the dial cord. So I broke it off and soldered it on the top. It's a real hack job. The other one, the other side of the positive side of that, the negative side of that's done properly. So these were both 500 
microfarad, two different brands of caps. I don't know where I put the other one. There's that one there. And then there's this one here. Um, those I think are marked, those were not what I thought they were. They're not the power caps. Well, I mean, they're, they're filter caps, but they're not the main power filter. That is, that's a thousand microfarad. And I just happen to have two 450s left. So I'll use those to replace that one. That one I think I can get at reasonably well, so hopefully I can desolder it. I have no idea what's going on with this diode that was sort of wrapped around it, but we'll wrap it around one of these, I guess, and call it a day. Maybe we'll, maybe I'll stack these like this, one on top of the other. That might be kind of fun and put some heat shrink around them and make a single capacitor out of them that I can wrap the diode around. The reason is that there are some radios where that kind of weird stuff seems to matter in getting them to work, so I don't know. Um, it's odd, but uh, yeah. So with that, then there's really only this one and there's another there's another one in the back there that I might, this one I could probably just bridge on the underside of the board easily enough. I mean, at this point, I might as well recap the whole thing because there are only a few left. This was the hard one to deal with. And the other, the other two, of course, I just soldered on the bottom of the board because they're the little one microfarad ones. I'm starting to make a list of the commonly used components so that I can do a, an order of actual name brand capacitors from probably Mouser. Um, and then we can take all these cheap radios and, and use Nishikam caps on them. <laughs> it's funny. Anyways, the, uh, the one thing that's really odd about this radio is, you know, you know, multiple brands of caps, different kinds of transistors in there behind two or two metal canned, probably geranium output transistors. And then there are a bunch of those little epoxy ones. There's one in there. So I don't know. Um, you know, there, there are elements of this thing where this is extremely well built. I mean, look at these brass standoffs to hold the case together. The clock's very good quality, but then you get unmatching speakers. They aren't, they haven't been changed. Those are the original ones. And then like weird stuff soldered on the back and I don't know. All this stuff here, it's just like all these little radios that are made in Taiwan. It's just, they're weird bits. It's like it was designed as a really high quality thing and then, you know, in manufacturing they cut corners. That's very odd. But I do think if I get all the capacitors replaced that this is going to work okay. I don't think it's going to be a great radio, but it'll work and, you know, I mainly want it in my office for the clock, which I think is pretty cool. So let me get to replacing that one and then we'll see what, if anything, to do about the other ones. So I've replaced three more capacitors. I'll show you in just a second. I've replaced this one here, which is a thousand microfarad. This is the main filter capacitor for the whole circuit that I've replaced. And I've replaced what I think are these two here, which are, we're both done with 500s. I can't really read what they're supposed to be on here, but I've replaced those as well. So those are the three big capacitors. The other three I replaced were these three that were in the signal path to the amplifier. Uh, and, you know, just see the amplifier's push-pull with two transformers and, you know, there's the preamp section and there's the main amplifier section and there's the speakers. Which, as I said, are weird because they aren't these speakers at all, but that seems to work. So let me just be careful I don't shock myself because this is plugged in. But, um, so those are two 47s that replaced the 1000 that was in there. Swing up that a little bit, maybe that'll help. Right, so these two, and I've kind of wrapped the weird diode around a bit. These are two 470s, like these are, to replace the two 500s that were there. Um, the other three, one is, if you'll remember, is here, connecting to the volume control. And the other two, if I can do this without shorting out the power, are over here on the back. I've left the others in circuit. 
There are a number of other electrolytics that I've decided to leave alone because the radio does seem to be working as I'm going to demonstrate in a minute. Um, I don't think this was ever a great performer and really I just want it working so that you can get in a few strong stations. So we are on... FM right now and as you can see there's there's as much gain as those little speakers can handle right so I mean it's picking up some noise from this um, I think we're on FM oh, maybe on AM there, that switch is a bit tight, but... And... Here it's not really very sensitive at all. Anyway. So there's obviously work that could be done with replacing the rest of the capacitors, but I'm kind of done with this, I think. Um, we've got output on FM, which is all I really care about, and I really only care about getting about two stations on this. So I think it's okay. I could certainly get back into it if I wanted to uh, replace all the capacitors in the tuning section. But um, well, I did replace that one there which I'm not precisely sure what, what it is, but it was easy to get at. Um, it doesn't seem to have made any difference. But, um, yeah, there are a number of other things that could be done, of course. But I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, this board is very fragile, and uh, like most of these radios, and I'm kind of content with it at the current stage. So I'm going to put it back together, try to get the pointer lined up with something and then I will show you the finished product when it's done. I have got the dial cord back on as you can see right here it's lined up more or less correctly and um, the original dial just had a bit of paint on it and I'm wondering if a little bit of paint pen might be sufficient to just hold that in place. You know, you don't really want to glue it on, right? Because I just want to keep it from slipping off. So I'm going to give that a try. If that works, then great. I think for my purposes, this is done. The key thing is look at the lovely clock that is still working. The alarm shut off. That's the power for the radio, as you can see here. The power light turns on in the corner. It's very dimly visible through the camera, but brighter here. Uh, no LEDs in this. It's 1970. It's a little early. Telecron movement here. Nice dial. Maybe if I also get motivated, I'll take the dial cover off because I see some lint inside, inside here that I hadn't noticed before. But, um, yeah. So... For me, I think this is a fairly successful repair, even though it isn't a complete repair. My aim was to get the radio working. I did. Um, as always, for me, these are learning exercises, playing with these sorts of things. And what I was able to do was troubleshoot the problem as being part of the power supply. I mean, I'm sorry, of the power amplifier. Well, power amplifier is a strong name, but there is, you know, push-pull amplifier here that that was what the uh, what the problem was um, and that these three capacitors were in fact the main issue then the other thing was the hum in it there's still a little bit but um, was re was resolved mostly by replacing that capacitor and then I replaced these other two um, large capacitors that we that are in the, the circuit the only thing I'm going to do maybe now 
I'll just push this out of the way, is test some of these, I apologize for my arm being in here, is test some of these capacitors that we got out of it. Now that one, I probably can't get in the tester, but that one I can. That one I can. That one I pulled right off. Um, this is one I hooked up backwards when I wasn't paying terribly good attention to what I was doing. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit and let's try these three. Then we'll just see what hooking it up backwards across the uh, across the six volt power supply did to this uh, GP capacitor. It got warm, so all right. So we've zoomed in a little bit here. Let's bring our potential targets of interest. Yeah, I may not be able to get that one in. So we'll just look at these three. Okay, so this is supposed to be a thousand microfarad, 10 volts. Let's stick it in the tester here. I'll reshape that lead a little bit. There we go. Okay, power, what have we got? It thought it was a diode. <laughs> so, bad. Uh, here's a one microfarad. I think I'm across. Nothing. Do I have it across? Sometimes it's. I might not have it across. Nothing. And this one is supposed to be twenty microfarad. Nothing. So I think we can assume that all the rest of the capacitors in the circuit are nothing. We'll I'll just see out of curiosity whether this one that I mistreated, oh, let's see, I might be able to hold it on this pad here. Let's try that. Well, 361, it's outside of rating, but it's a capacitor at least. So, yeah, these are all junk, right? So, realistically, in order to get this working properly, every capacitor in it has to be replaced. And I'm afraid I've, I've run out. Maybe they will reform, as people like to say. Um, I have my doubts. My guess is that there is no dielectric in these at all. What's funny about this one is someone had touched a soldering iron to it here in assembling it, and I've got to say, I did it in almost exactly the same place, trying to get the other one out. So <laughs> I don't think that got, went through the plastic case, but yeah, these are like plastic cases and then filled up. You'd think that they would do pretty well, but apparently not. Well, thanks for watching my very amateurish partial repair of this radio. Um, as I said, I have limited interest in trying to do too much with this, but uh, the clock's working and, um, and the radio works enough to pull in the news. That's, I think, an adequate repair for for my purposes here. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, if I ever get back into this and decide to do the rest of the capacitor, so I will possibly let people know. But uh, I've kind of run out of energy for this particular project today. Thanks.